Well, I guess the rod just exploded in this. Oh, something definitely exploded. Hmm. Well, getting into some deeper things here. Power steering return line was leaking. It always was leaking. So I replaced it. But the problem is there's nothing really wrong with this hose. The problem is, is where the hose is located. As we can tell here, the hose has been rubbing up against the alternator bracket assembly here. And it was routed right in the middle of it. But the problem is, is that because we're dealing with 1979 engine with a 1990 body, we just really have nowhere to route it. So I tried, I routed it up front. I figured I'd give that a try. It's, you know, it's probably gonna have the same fate after a couple of years, um, you know, where it'll, it'll eventually wear a hole in it. Uh, I can't really route it behind the mount, the alternator bracket, because the suspension components are all under this the splash seal so I don't know what to do um, I'm getting rid of all this I'm sick and tired of this three belt drive system uh, when I first got the car the alternator and power steering belt they were running at different speeds and as you could tell that would definitely be a factor these pulleys are the same size meanwhile that pulley is you know two small ones and a large one so obviously what we're dealing with here is is two belts that'll be running at two different speeds and that would obviously make the power steering belt really crabby mainly because you got the alternator trying to spin at one speed and then you got the belt down here which is turning at a different speed along with the air conditioner compressor and you're still trying to drive this belt which is intended to go at the same speed so there was a problem with that the only problem is on my end is that these you know serpentine dry belt systems for these old particular engines they are they run upwards of two thousand dollars and i mean that's that's quite a bit of coin to invest in something like that so i was almost tempted to go walking around the yards and see if i can just find a three belt pulley system that's actually the same height typically like what's mounted on the 78 buick so today's fiasco at hand Brand new radiator, a three core equivalent. Um, it's a lot smaller than the radiator that was in it, so I'm starting to wonder if this is just a two core. Uh, I have reason to believe that the other radiator is definitely a, a triple core rod. It held quite a bit of coolant, but you know, only time will tell. So I'll wait to look for those. Those are for my tranny cooler lines. But anyway, I'm going to take the plug out for the low engine coolant warning light. This is where the uh, low coolant sensor would plug into. And uh, I noticed that with this radiator, it actually sits lower. So, you know, after losing maybe a liter and a half of engine coolant, the, um, the light would come on well it looks like with this particular rod the rod would damn near have to be empty before that light would come on and uh, you'd notice that the engine would overheat so i'm going to go ahead and install that and then i'll go ahead and set the radiator inside the car well typical after mega radiators my low coolant sensor will not fit in here <laughs> go figure so i'm going to stick the cap back on there and hope it doesn't leak there is an o-ring on there so anyway I took the caps off of the inlet and outlet of the um, rat hoses they clamp down to, so go ahead and flip them around. Of course, it has that stupid apparatus there that'll let go in another six months. God, I hate that. I'll go ahead and drop the radiator into the car. Well, the rat is in. I don't want to add any more coolant. I gotta change the, I gotta try and find a low coolant sensor. Or that, the low coolant light is just going to stay steady. Yeah. It already is. I don't want that thing digging. I could ground it out and make light go out, I guess, but I don't really want to do that either. I'd rather set it up properly, so I'm not going to add any more coolant. There's enough in there just to prevent it from overheating. So, yeah, it's going to 
Well, heater valve replacement here today. I ended up using a bunch of various tools to try and get this out of here. Well, I'm pretty sure you can guess on what I did to it. I grabbed it with my hand and I broke it off because I was using various tools. I even came to using that stupid thing to try and see what I could do. And I also used this stupid thing to see what I could do. Pipe wrench wouldn't get in there. It's in such a tight spot. I mean, it's really, really, really a pain to try and uh, get in there. Uh, I just noticed something that transmission dipstick tube has a crack in it. Hmm. Yeah, does it ever have a crack in it? Huh. Well. Um. So, I, without getting any fuselage jammed in the hole, I'm going to try and put the new valve in there. I don't have any thread tape. Hopefully, I get away without it. Anyway, uh, I ended up, what I ended up doing is I got some of these deep impact sockets. And uh, what I used was an uh, inch and a sixteenth. Uh, crammed it on there. Of course, I'll never get the damn thing out. Um, I think 24 might have been too small. I think I have a 24 here. Anyhow, so. But in any event, uh, I managed to get it out of there. This valve... Either it's the valve that's at fault or it's the tempmatic system that's at fault, but uh, I keep constantly keep getting hot air blowing at my feet and on a hot summer day. I mean, it's not really very comfortable to drive this car. So, 20 bucks worth of parts and a whole bunch of, um, you know, trips to the local hardware store to trying to get the tools that I need because I'm at the house. I'm not at the shop here today. Um, so I decided to do it here. It never hurts to have some tools lying around here anyhow. Or in the car, to be complete. The funny thing about this valve, this particular valve, is that it actually has a three-port system, whereas the old one only had two. The funny thing is... I don't think there was... There shouldn't be an O-ring in there. No. Anyway, the funny thing is, is the old one only had a two ports. So this would go into your intake manifold, and this would go out to the to the uh, hose that goes to the heater core right here. And it's just dangling off to the side. We can tell it's just laying against the the uh, uh, HVAC assembly there. So anyhow, um, but I look if you look closely inside there, this port absolutely goes nowhere. It's just solid cast in there. So I don't know. I guess um, four seasons, I believe it is. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I don't know, they make them all the same, but, you know, some of them have three ports, some of them only have two, so they're, you know, I guess when they make these, I guess they uh, just cap it off with the cap, I don't know. So, anyway, uh, but it is the right part number and all that jazz, so let's see if we can thread this sucker in there. So many hoses in the way here. It's absolutely horrendous. So, hope for the best, I mean... thread tape or any kind of goo to put on the threads. I think somebody put Loctite on the threads. But anyway, if it leaks, it leaks. I'll just tighten her down. Whew, that thing's in there stiff already. Anyway, I'm going to keep turning it a few more times. I need two hands though.